So welcome back to another rebuild here on NBA 2K25 Next Gen. In today's video, we are back with another rebuild here in the Curry era, but today we're doing a fantasy draft. I've been absolutely loving the Curry era rebuilds, and on top of that, I absolutely love fantasy drafts. So I thought might as well kind of combine the best of both worlds today. I was kind of surprised we actually hadn't done one of these so far, but if you don't know the way this is going to work, basically just going to do a fantasy draft with everybody who was currently in the NBA in the Curry era, and of course our end goal today to win a championship. Really excited for this one today. Very much looking forward to get back into some of these challenges that I know you guys love very much. So any different challenges you guys do want to see, along with any other video ideas, make sure to let me know down below in the comment section. But we're going to have a little bit of a challenge ahead of ourselves today. Hoping we get a good pick, but uh, let's go see. Okay, as you can see, we have not gone ahead yet and selected our team. That is because I don't want you guys to think I am cheating in any way, shape, or form. So we will scroll over here to the team section. We will shut our eyes. As you can see, we will scroll through all of these teams randomly and hopefully land on one that's going to have a good pick because I have no idea what it's going to be. So we'll stop right about now. And it is going to be the Golden State Warriors, funny enough, here in the Curry era. We're going to land with them. Maybe they give him a good pick. Maybe they give him a bad pick. But moment of truth, let's see what we're working with. We have the sixth overall pick. I can already see it. So just looking here at the top of the top, it is LeBron, Curry, KD. Not really many surprises so far. Russell Westbrook sitting here. And the Celtics take Kawhi, which means we are officially on the clock. Now, there are a lot of really fun players from this era. And immediately jumping out at me is either James Harden or Anthony Davis. Of course, AD, only 23 years old at this time, already a 94 overall. But James Harden was basically an MVP candidate throughout this era. So I feel like he's kind of the obvious pick. Not to say that anybody... Oh, fuck, I forgot. Giannis is here as well. Not to say that anybody you know below him here is not really worth it. Also, Jokic sitting here, but... I don't really get to use Prime's James Harden very often, so he's a 96 overall, still only 27 years old. That makes a little sense for me here today. So we're going to make the first three draft picks. After that, I'll just sim the rest of it because, again, while we'll still get good players after the first three rounds, they won't be nearly as impactful you know, as these first couple of guys. So let's see. Obviously, have our shooting guard now. See Al Horford here. you got Dwight Howard, Jeff Teague. All right, there are certainly some names here that I can work with. Um, I'm trying to think and trying to get somebody, because I'm trying to time this out. I want to get somebody who's relatively young, like Jamal Murray could be fun, Brandon Ingram sitting here, Jalen Brown, but I also want to get somebody who's like already somewhat good, if, if you know what I'm saying. So you got Julius Randle, he's a guy I've gotten in these rebuilds before, and then finally, let's look at the 22-year-olds. I'm going to be led by Capella. Yeah, just probably not. All right, got Siakam sitting here as well. All right, I think what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take one more guy that's like highly rated. I think Al Horford's going to be that guy for me. And then I think our final pick will be one of the younger guys like a Brandon Ingram or a Jalen Brown. So shooting guard and center are figured out at this point. Finally, we're going to take a look here. Jamal Murray could move him to the one. But I think Brandon Ingram makes a lot of sense for us here today. Only 19 years old, of course, is on a rookie scale contract. So we're going to have a decent amount of flexibility there. He is going to be our final pick. We will sim the rest of this draft. I'll see you guys with the full team. Now, I'm sure many of you were wondering, yes, I did remember to turn off previously traded draft picks. So as things currently stand, every single team, all 30 of them own their first round picks for however many years it allows you to look at them into the future. All right, let's dive into it a little bit. James Harden, Al Horford, we obviously drafted. They took Nene for us at some point in time. We got a 24-year-old Jordan Clarkson. We, of course, took Brandon Ingram. And outside of that, we got a 31-year-old Nick Young. We got Alec Burks. Scary Terry here, only 22 years old. Maybe a little something there. Uh, we got Daniel Tice and then whoever the hell, Alan Anderson, Julius Daniels, Ed Knight, Igor Saric, and Alan Bibby are. Yeah, even in the fantasy drafts, you can't really avoid the auto-generated 2K bullshit that they give you. So uh, we're going to have a couple trades before we kick off year one. I'm not necessarily saying this is a championship caliber team right off the rip, but you know I think we can work with this for sure. We have a pretty glaring hole at our power forward spot right now. I'm not going to sit here and tell you Kevon Looney is exactly an ideal fit at the power forward position, but giving up a 34-year-old Nene who is expiring along with whoever the hell Ed Wright is, getting Kevon Looney in a first-round draft pick in 2019. Looney, by the way, has two years of team control, so basically under... 2 million-ish dollars for the remainder of this video. Feels like a really big win for us. So I'll probably start Looney at the four for year one. Could also start Horford at the four. He, of course, is a guy that can space the floor a little bit. But um, that is our first trade. I think we have a few more to go. In hindsight, this trade's going to end up being pretty minimal, probably going to be pretty useless, but we're in the market for a backup center after moving on from Nene. So Alan Anderson, Igor Saric, whoever the hell Igor is there, going to be sent to Phoenix for Roy Hibbert in a 2021 second round pick. Now, Hibbert's only 29 years old, but he's already at a 72 overall and is an expiring contract after this season. So probably not in our long-term plans, but I guess a good stopgap for a season, if you will. 
ended up making a few trades now ready to kick off year one here in golden state now the starting five is pretty decent of course there are a few weak points kind of around the edges if you will but all things considered i can work with this jordan clarkson james harden brandon ingram kavon looney al horford going to be your one through five the bench unit is certainly going to need some work at some point a couple of veterans here of course a couple of young players as well so we'll kind of see how that all works itself out but nick young going to be our sixth man mr swaggy p at a 74 overall got alec burks behind him scary terry roy hibbert and finally mr daniel Tice. So I guess the one good thing, you know, while randomly selecting a team and landing on the Warriors is that we are going to have Steve Kerr, who obviously has some pretty strong ratings here in 2K. So hopefully that helps us out. Going to be a 10-man rotation, and uh, I'm pretty excited to see how year one goes. I'll see you guys at the end of it. I feel like 2K is kind of rubbing it in right now because not only do we not have a great first season, finish with a record of 38 and 44, but we obviously had the opportunity to draft Anthony Davis if we wanted to. Passed upon that opportunity, obviously took James Harden, and AD wins an MVP there in San Antonio. So, yeah, not a great start. I'm not going to lie to you people. Simmons rookie of the year, Rajon Rondo back in his Celtics jersey. I miss you every day, GOAT. All right, AD also wins deep boy Jokic most improved Popovich coach of the year. At 63 and 19. Okay, uh, we are not in the playoffs. I can see it right there. Uh, not really too big of a surprise. I mean, 38 wins in a fantasy draft isn't necessarily the worst thing in the world, but we'll have a lottery pick. Maybe we'll get a little bit lucky. I guess that is, you know, a somewhat positive news, if you will. Celtics take the East. Okay, let's take a look at some of the numbers real quick on the season. Harden was incredible. Now, I don't want to downplay that. It obviously sucks. 81 and MVP, and we could have drafted him ahead of Harden, but James Harden was really, really good for us, so I'm not really too upset about it. Jordan Clarkson, our second leading scorer. You got Al Horford in here. Nick Young, Brandon Ingram, Alec Burks, Gary Terry, Looney, Hibbert, and then Tice. Rebounding department going to be led by Looney, and then assist going to be Harden. So, uh, unfortunately, we'll not be participating here in the first playoffs of this video, but it's fine. Celtics Lakers in the finals. Kawhi and the Celtics get it done. And uh, yeah, fun, I guess. Okay, off-season time. Any Warriors calling it a career? Doesn't really look like it. Anybody notable? Anyways, uh, we are going to look at some historic changes. That's fine. And then we'll get up to not the biggest moment of this video so far, but you know, it's up there. We are currently projected the 13th pick, so probably not going to be anything too, too great. And we sit right there at 13. Okay, staff signing. Going to keep Steve Kerr. You know, everybody probably has varying opinions about Steve Kerr. Like him, love him, fucking hate him. It is what it is. But he has really good ratings here, so he will stay on as our guy. Now, the 13th overall pick is not as great as maybe I could have hoped. It's kind of just middle of the pack, end of the lottery. But we could probably still get a relatively impactful player here. You know, we're not going to get Mitchell or Tatum or anybody like that, but... Hopefully somebody who can be a nice rotation piece for us. Now, the second round pick, I don't really need. So if anybody wants to do that, thank you very much, Sixers. Let's just see who's available for us here at the 13th overall selection. We'll take a look at the summary. Tatum, Marketing, Mitchell, Ball, Kuzma. Not really a lot of surprises right there. So currently available to us are certainly some quality NBA players. And jumping out at me immediately would be a guy like Jarrett Allen, maybe OG Ananobi. Uh, no disrespect to, you know, Jonathan Isaac, Dennis Smith Jr., Dylan Brooks, but I'm taking Allen or Ananobi pretty much 10 times out of 10 over all of those guys. So I'm thinking positionally in terms of a need right now. You know, OG Ananobi at that small forward spot could come in, be a new backup behind Brandon Ingram, but then we're really young at that three. Whereas the center position with Roy Hibbert, probably makes a little bit more sense to replace behind Al Horford. So uh, I'm not getting into a pissing contest between who I'd rather have, you know, hypothetically long-term between Allen or Ananobi. This is strictly a need-based draft decision because Jared Allen is a really good player. So six foot nine out of Texas, obviously eventually becomes a really good NBA player. As of now, he's going to be a 74 overall. Nick Young picks up his player option. Then we'll bring back Looney and Scary Terry. And uh, I'm not sure what our money situation is looking like. I know we don't probably have a lot of free agents, but do we have any money? No, we, we most certainly do not. So uh, that could be something we could work on. Uh, there is a lot of money committed to a lot of different players right now. So let's see if we can work on some trades. Okay, pulled off a trade with the Houston Rockets. Andre Drummond is now a member of the Golden State Warriors. And if I'm being honest with you, he is like the sixth or seventh big man I tried to trade for. Now, here was the trade package. Alec Burks, whoever the hell Alan Bibby is, Daniel Tice, Nick Young, and our unprotected first next year in Atlanta's Drummond. Now, I'm not a huge fan of playing Horford at the four. I think his overall might regress a little bit. But at the end of the day, there is just very minimal in terms of relatively solid enough big man options for us. Like, look at the list here of players. 
And I'm going to assume everybody from Jokic up is pretty much untouchable. Millsaps in free agency. We don't have any money. I tried for Whiteside. Didn't try for Gobert. Tried for Kevin Love. Tried for Aldridge. Didn't try for Bosch because of the age. Obviously, Embiid's not happening. DJ, Porzingis. Like, there's just not a lot of options here in terms of quality big men. So, if I have to move some positions around, it's not the end of the world. I think we're now all set in the front court potentially for the rest of this video. Still going to have B.I. start at the three. Didn't have the worst rookie season ever. Certainly could have been a little bit better, especially in terms of the shooting splits. But uh, I wouldn't mind upgrading the point guard spot. Could probably give Jordan Clarkson one more year. I'm certainly not going to force the issue. But right now, I do want to go ahead and find myself backup shooting guard uh, and a backup small forward. So just looking over some options here. A guy like Dion Waiters certainly wouldn't be the worst option in the world. Small forward spot. How about Andre Roberson? I actually don't hate that. A little bit of defense coming off the bench. Sure, welcome to the team, Andre. We're going to sign him to roughly three years, $26 million. And the backup shooting guard doesn't have to be as elite. Uh, and I say that... Oh, no, never mind. Uh, just because, obviously, James Harden's like a 97 overall. So, uh, oh, boy. This is, uh, yeah, not great. Okay. Um, this is bad. <laughs> there is uh, no really way to spin this into something super positive. So, Aaron Aflalo, welcome to the team. One year, a little plug and play. Fine by me. All right, that's going to be it for our moves uh, for our second offseason. Hopefully, we're in a better position than we were just a season ago, and hopefully back in the playoffs because we don't have our first-round pick. Let's set the rotation. Year one was a disappointment. There's really no way to spin it into anything but that. I thought we had a talented enough team to at least make the playoffs, and of course, that did not happen. Now, this offseason, we reassessed our situation a little bit, and I'm pretty happy with the product that we are now putting on the floor. The starting five is... Uh, as follows, Jordan Clarkson, James Harden, Brandon Ingram developing nicely. Seeing a little bit of regression out of Al Horford. Of course, he is 31 years old, but it's also just kind of how 2K works. So I'll keep an eye on that. And then obviously we did to make the big trade for Andre Drummond. Bench unit, certainly better as well. Andre Roberson going to take over six-man responsibilities. You got Scary, Terif, Ter Scary Terry excuse me, developing nicely. Kevon Looney, the same. Jared Allen, and then Aaron Aflalo, who actually didn't go down in the overall department. Thought that would have been the case, but fine by me. I will see you guys at the end of year number two, hopefully as a playoff team. Much, much better year two for us here in Golden State. 58 and 24 is the final record, obviously going to be in the playoffs. Now, let's address the elephant in the room. The Celtics won the finals last year. Kawhi Leonard was a finals MVP, and Steph Curry was a free agent this last offseason, and they signed him, and he won an MVP. I really hope Kawhi is no longer with the Celtics, because if he is, I don't think we have a chance in hell at ever winning anything. But yeah, Steph in a Celtics jersey. I wish, man. I really do. Lonzo Ball, Rookie of the Year. Alex Len, your sixth man. AD wins another deep boy. Daniel Tice does win most improved. Pretty much always happens when you trade away somebody. And Todd James... I don't really know. Um, okay, we are going to be a two seed here in the West. You can see that there in the playoff bracket. We were one game behind the defending... Or no, defending camp? No, they didn't win all. Celtics won it all last year. I'm losing my damn mind. But the Spurs, who obviously do have Anthony Davis... 64 wins for the Celtics. So we have the third best record in basketball. Take a look at some of the numbers. James Harden was incredible. Jordan Clarkson, Andre Drummond, nice 14 and a half, 15 boards. Al Horford, Brandon Ingram, Scary Terry, Allen Looney, Oflalo, and then Roberson. Rebound's going to be Drummond. Assist's going to be Harden. So back in the playoffs. Feels good. Here with the Lakers in round one, who have Paul George, Dwayne Wade, Pat Beverly. Yeah. Not a lot of that really moves me too much. I think that should be a, you know, relatively speaking, easy playoff series. So as things stand, we are up 3-1, and we do end up winning the series in five. Now moving on to Dallas. Reggie Jackson, Jimmy Buckets, Middleton, Pau Gasol, Tyson Chandler. Um, you know, Pau Gasol at this point in his career is 37. Uh, you know, not nearly the player he once was. Middleton and Jimmy are obviously talented. Reggie Jackson. I, I'm, I don't, am I crazy for saying they don't really move me too much either? So, but okay, down 2-1. Down 3-1. Maybe I should have taken them a little bit more seriously. We get bounced in the semis. Disappointing. And nobody's beating the fucking Celtic. I, what am I supposed to do with this? It's it's unbelievable. Okay. Time for the final offseason. Uh, you know, we have a lot of work to do. A lot of big decisions to make. Because we are just not really close to, you know, where we probably want to be right now. So... Um, draft lottery. We're not going to have our first round pick, but it's fine. It wasn't going to be a good pick. Anyways, it is the Blazers, Rockets, Cavs, Hawks, and then the Wizards as your top five. Now, Steve Kerr is going to be brought back. It would be insane to move on from him given his ratings, even if I don't want to say we've underachieved given the team that we have, but you know, we're just not quite there. Something's still a little bit off. So we have two second round picks, not really in the mood to use either of them. So going to pass upon the 2018 draft, Ingram, Rozier, and Looney all going to be brought back. Whoever the hell Al Scott and Harry Lewis are, 
no. Okay, and then free agency, where there's a lot of notable names. We don't really have anybody here, but we also just don't have any money, unfortunately. Would have been nice to be able to sign somebody like LeBron or something like that. But um, we are definitely going to shake things up a bit. I'll see you guys some moves. We pulled off a big trade with the Minnesota Timberwolves and landed ourselves a new starting point guard. It was Al Horford, three first-round picks in two seconds heading to Minnesota for Mike Conley. Now, Mike Conley is not a superstar or anything like that, but he is certainly an upgrade on this team. He provides a little bit more scoring, which was something I think we were missing. So, uh, not a shot against Jordan Clarkson. Ultimately, filled his role well enough and played decently, but I just think we needed an upgrade, and ultimately, Al Horford was probably going to continue to regress. I'm now somewhat regretting using my second-round pick in the fantasy draft on him, but uh, somebody else is now going to have to be moved to you know replace Al Horford at our power forward spot, and again, the options in terms of big men are very, very limited. So, let me start cooking, I guess. Oh, wow. They took that straight up. Okay. I don't think I overpaid. Uh, we ended up trading Terry Rozier and Jared Allen for Kyle Kuzma. Now, I know, you know, hypothetically looking at that in a broader picture now in real life would be an absolutely insane trade. Uh, but here in 2K, we have a big need at the power forward spot. And Kyle Kuzma was kind of realistically one of the options I could have actually traded for. So uh, it sucks giving up Allen and Rozier because they were both pretty important bench pieces for me. But I'm always going to kind of value starters, starters over uh, bench guys. So now we need to kind of work on the bench a little bit. I was excited that we were able to keep Jordan Clarkson. So really, it's just finding a new backup center because whoever the hell I find to you know play behind James Harden not really going to matter too much it's going to be 10 minutes a night so let's look at some power forward or center options here for us well Danilo Gallinari sitting here in free agency that's actually a bit of a surprise you know what let's go ahead and make a play for Gallo let's throw a little money at him because he's still an 80 overall so you know what? we'll sign him to a two-year deal and then maybe we move Roberson now I know we're going to lose a little bit of defense coming off the bench but if I can find somebody else to, you know, take over that center spot, might as well, right? I mean, what am I really losing there? See JaVale McGee. Actually, this kind of kills two birds with one stone. Troy Daniels can come in and just be my backup shooting guard as well. Ooh, Jakob Pertl. Now, the numbers there aren't really elite, but we know that overall is going to continue to go up as well. I think that probably the play. I see Hernan Gomez there. Yeah, we're going to pull the trigger on the deal here uh, with the Miami Heat and land ourselves Jakob Pertl. So whoever we sign here in free agency, yeah not great not great whatsoever um how about gary payton the second why not at least he's 25 maybe goes up a few overalls i don't know if him or clarkson would be a higher shooting guard it doesn't really change my mind too much gary goes down clarkson goes up so clarkson will be my backup shooting guard um okay we have now found ourselves in a position with a much improved team in my opinion and uh I'm going to hold on to Ingram. Again, he hasn't developed as much as I kind of hoped, but this team has also gotten significantly better every year of this rebuild. So I am just hoping that this is enough to compete with the goddamn Celtics and every other loaded team in the Western Conference. So I'll see you guys at the start of the final regular season. I think it is pretty clear that this is the deepest team we have had so far throughout this rebuild. Hell, we have two 80-plus overalls coming off our bench. That is not something we were even close to saying just a season ago. Now, this starting five has also seen some improvements. Obviously, the additions of Mike Conley and Kyle Kuzma. And I really do think this team can click well enough to hopefully get a championship. So, Conley joins Harden in the backcourt. Obviously, still got Ingram, Kuzma, and Drummond, three through five. Bench unit will now be led by Gallinari. Still got Jordan Clarkson, Kevon Looney, Jakob Pertl, and Gary Payton the second. So... Yeah, this is it. I, I hope it is enough. I, I don't know that for a fact, but uh, I'm going to choose to be optimistic, I guess is the way I'm going to look at this. So I will see you guys at the end of the final regular season. Anthony Davis may have won the battle, but we won the war. James Harden, your MVP here at the end of the final regular season. We go 73-9 as well. So championship, I'm thinking it. You guys probably are as well. So I'm very happy right now. Of course, that is... Very much subject to change. Now, Luka Doncic is a member of the Trailblazers. It just does not look good seeing him in that jersey. Tyreek Evans, sixth man of the year in Miami. Giannis wins deep point. Also doesn't look good seeing him in that jersey. Scary Terry wins most improved. It sucks. It would have been nice to have kept him off the bench, but I had a feeling that Kuzma was a pretty important piece here. Uh, and Steve Kerr does win coach of the year. So entering, obviously, our final chance at, at winning this thing. We have not really come close so far. And uh, I'm just kind of hoping and praying that this is the team that can get it done. So here are the scoring numbers. Looks like there were a lot of guys that, you know, really contributed. Of course, the additions of Conley and Kuzma helped out quite a bit as they were our second and third leading scorers. Okay, New Orleans here, round one. Kevin Durant, what the fuck? I don't give a shit he's in his second season. You're telling me that KD, Jokic, and Donovan Mitchell at, and LaMarcus Aldridge at any point in their respective careers are going to be an eight seed? Really? 
We're not better than this team. I'm not going to sit here and bullshit you. There's no way we're beating them. Maybe we are. How, am I am I missing something with that Pelicans team? Why are they not way better? Uh, what? All right, moving on to the Jazz. In, in th this is what this would be the team I lose to. By the way, I'd go through those demons over there in New Orleans, and this is what I'd left. I'd be left with Rajon Rondo and the Funky Bunch over here in Utah, and I'd probably lose to this group. I don't want to put that out into the universe, but uh, no, 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 no. Two K. Thank you. West Finals, us in San Antonio. D'Angelo Russell, who I have seen develop to insanely high overalls in these Curry era rebuilds. Now, D'Lo's a good player, in, well, relatively speaking, of course. But to see him at a borderline 90 is, is crazy. And it's not like even his numbers are super crazy. I guess this game just really likes D'Lo. Deion Waiters, can you imagine the shot chucking that would go on in this backcourt? Barnes, of course, Anthony Davis, and Clint Capello. So, Kyle Kuzma's going to have his hands full at the power forward spot. There is no doubt about that. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Belt to ass is the way that I felt that just went for us. Just curious. Just want to see the conference finals numbers here. Harden. Yeah, this is this is not great. Okay. Disappointing. Disappointing ending. And I, honestly, I don't think anybody was beating the Celtics anyways. I mean, Steph Curry and Kawhi Leonard, I don't care how many games they won the regular season. Did they three-peat? I think they might have three-peated. All right, well, that obviously sucks. The first, and I'll definitely be doing another one at some point, you know, fantasy draft rebuild here in the Curry era uh, did not go well. Uh, yeah, there's no way to spin it into a positive. Not even making a finals is so, you know, below how I want these to really always go. And uh, my apologies, it did not go well enough. I thought we put together a good enough team. And regular season-wise, we certainly did, but... We don't play for regular season wins around here in these rebuilds. We do uh, definitely not. So uh, I hope you guys still enjoyed it. We'll definitely be doing this again at some point, probably a couple months from now. And uh, if there's any fun twists in terms of the Curry era fantasy draft rebuilds you want to see, let me know. Any other challenges? So uh, that's it for me. I hope you guys still enjoyed. As always, thanks so much for watching. I love you guys. I'll catch you guys all in the next one.